All right, today let's talk about rigs, uh, mainly CPU rigs. I don't really have any GPU rigs left over. The ones I do have are dismantled and I'm selling my GPUs. Yeah, I know some people are still GPU mining, but I don't know. It wasn't for me with the heat, the electricity, and the uh, form factor, the space. Uh, I just kind of like the CPU rigs. Uh, light, low electricity use, low heat, and uh, yeah, small form factor. Don't take, up much, uh, don't take up much space. So you can see I got this baker's rack here for some of my rigs. So there's about seven, wait, how do I got seven? One, two, three, four, five, seven on this uh, baker's rack. I decided to hang them, uh, most of them. Some I have flat. When they're lying flat, they really collect dust, uh, piles up, gets into the fans and everything. Uh, doing vertical, I'm hoping the dust will not accumulate as much on the motherboards. Is it a problem? Eh. You, you know, just keep up on it, get some uh, air and blow out the uh, blow out the dust bunnies. Now, the air has to be computer air because uh, most compressed air will have moisture in it. So if you're going to force air in to clean out your computer components, you may be forcing in moisture, which is not really good for uh, computer components. So let's just go through today what one of my rigs looks like. And uh, you guys can let me know what you guys are running. And uh, yeah, we can compare kind of like uh, uh, motherboard motherboard CPU rig porn, right? Here we go. This one, we won't talk about that one. That's an older AMD 5. So we just talked about it. That's an old AMD 5. So what do we have in the rig? First off, I have uh, 750 watt power supplies right there. Some are ours game, A-R-E-S-G-A-M-E. This one on this rig is a 750 Corsair. More than enough juice. I had the 750s around because I had GPUs uh, running off the rigs in addition to some external HP power supplies really loaded out. But and now with this, 750 is more than enough and uh, to power this thing. And what happens? You got your cable coming in, powers your motherboard right here. And also down here, these two cables. Where's my, where's my finger? Yeah, I know that's what she said. Uh, right here, this powers the CPU. I don't know if it's focusing. Focus. Those power the CPU. And then you also have the uh, power cable to the SATA drive, if I can find it. Not the best organization, but I just wanted to get things up and running. So right here, you got my SATA drive, Kingston 128, 120 gigabyte SDD drive. And on there, you have another power cable on the right oh wait on the what well, i can't see on the left is the power cable from the uh, power supply and that's it for the power you got that puppy fired up uh we have the power cable into the sata like i mentioned right here and then also with the sata you have the uh net, the um, drive cable right here plug it into your sata port you got one two three four six of those on this this motherboard is uh let's see x4 let me get the right word for it it's uh msi x470 gaming plus max motherboard msi this is an x570 i think i ran i just kind of get x470s anymore not much difference other than they got this little fan right there on the 570 yeah anyway let's go on so we got the SATA drive, we got the power supply. Uh, now let's talk. We got the motherboard, of course. On this one, we got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six PCI slots for GPUs. And then you can also get extenders as well, but we're not going to go there. Very, very scalable, these motherboards. So here it is, X470. It's upside down. Here we go. X470 Gaming Plus Max. I never even noticed that until just now. There's so much stuff printed on these boards. All right, the next thing I have here is two channels. Can you see this? Two channels, memory sticks of Corsair. One's, you know, this is Corsair DDR4. I think it's, I can't remember the speed. Oh, I can't see. Hold on, I'm going to cheat. Twenty four hundred. I think these are eight gigabytes. 
I can't read that. I'm I'm wrong. Twenty four. I know. I can see the twenty four hundred. I just don't remember. Again, these rigs are over two years old when I pieced them together. So anyway, four CPU rig mining. It is best to have at least two channels filled out with memory sticks, and uh, you'll definitely get a better hash rate. All right, what else? So, yeah, check that out. You can get up to four. You pair them there. They do every other, this one. First this bay, and then this bay. And you get the little red light down there. It shows you which ones are, are uh, plugged in and working. All right, next is, uh, of course, CPU. This is an AMD with a uh, AMD Ryzen 3900X. Uh, is it, geez, I can't remember. Is it 12? I got to look now. My God, I should know this stuff. I failed. I'm going to hold on a sec, check my dashboard. 12-core processor, big daddies. All right, 12-core processor. So we got that, and we got the nice prism display. You can go in, and you can set the freaking colors on this to do random stuff like, like people do in their cars and that. Eh, I could take it or leave it. It's cute and all. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Right here for the, for the fan and the LEDs, this cable right here comes out, blammo, comes around, and your motherboard will have a port on it, if you can see it, where's my finger, right there, and that's for the USB, uh, JUSB for the lights, it'll light up the LEDs, and there's also, there's two of them, and there's one here as well, you just got to learn your motherboard, and that's kind of the fun part of this stuff, is finding out what is on your motherboard and what you can do, these, uh, CPUs are beefy with the heat sink. Look at that thing. You got one, two sets of fins, the piping to, uh, to make the heat flow. The CPU is like buried under here. And you can see this thing clamps down right here. It comes through clamps. And if I can see the damn thing over here underneath, oh, don't bump the computer, is, uh, is the clamp right up in here. That's where the clamp just clamps down. And then, of course, you have the thermal paste between the CPU and the heat sink. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's that. You got the memory. You got the motherboard. You got the CPU. You got the SATA drive, which has my Windows 10 on it and boots right up. I'll show you an alternative to that in a second. Next, I am running headless. Blammo. No video card. No display. I remote in using Google Remote Desktop. Uh, what you have to do in the BIOS and MSI is go in to your BIOS, hit delete when you come up. When you do that, here's the catch 22. You have to have a video card in with an HDMI cable to see your BIOS. So that's the time when you're setting things up to have a video, gar video card on here. Hit delete for the MSI, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the BIOS menu display comes up. You go in there and you go into advanced. You go into integrated graphics and you say... Uh, Detect VGA, I think, oh my God, is it VGA? Detect VGA or something like that, you can say ignore. Because if you say, if I think it's defaulted to always, and if there's no video device, it's not going to boot up. So you can say ignore, and boom, it'll just boot up without having a video card on your motherboard. And then it'll come up in your Windows, boot from your drive, and then you can remote desktop in and do your magic. Then once they're all set up, you know, after you set that setting, you can then power it down, pull off the video card, and then boot back up, and you're all good to go. So it's integrated graphics. Check for a VGA display or VGA device or what I can't remember exactly. I have a video on it elsewhere. Uh, so look in that under the advanced setting on the MSI board and just say ignore, and you'll be able to boot up headless because I don't want that huge weight on these cards. It will, you know, they are pretty heavy, those, uh, those massive GPUs, even 6600 sizes and up to 30, 70, 30 ATIs. Yeah. Next I have hardwired Cat6 to my switch into my uh, fiber optic ATT service. Don't use Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is good and all, but if you're like a gamer and you want high performance, you want to be wired in, baby. You want to be wired in. Woo! And down, down here is my TP-Link with all my connectors. So that's what I'm using, the TP-Link TL Tango Libra SG116 Sierra, uh, which G? I forgot what G is, Gitmo 116. So that's my switch, and then that runs to my uh, fiber modem 
from AT&T. All right, we got that, we got that. That is pretty much it in a nutshell. Again, you can run anything on here. You got all these USB ports over here. You can do Hive, um, Hive OS, boot from that. Put a memory stick in there. You could do nice hash OS, boot from that. You can have dual boot. You can leave the SATA drive in and just have it boot from, um, I mean, you can pick. You can have it boot from your own OS and boot to a net and switch back to Windows. Just depends on what ordering and what's plugged in at the time and based on your BIOS settings, what the boot order is. So it's very flexible. If you just, you just got to learn it, just play with it. You will not hurt it unless you, you know, drop water on it and drop some metal and short it out. Yeah. But short of that, I mean, uh, you can uh, experiment and have fun with it. CMOS batteries right here. If you ever, ever really screw up and things aren't reading right, it's not detecting devices or things are just wonky. It's not picking up the memory or the CPU. You just power down, disconnect your power cable, pop out this battery, wait five minutes. Uh, there is a jumper reset as well up on the motherboards here. You just got to look at your manual for a reset and it resets basically everything to default. But popping a battery up for five minutes does the same thing. Pop it back in. And then when it boots up, it's going to say, oh, do you want to configure this device? And you're starting from, uh, starting from scratch. And I did that on one of these rigs because it wasn't behaving right. All right, that is it. The only, the only other thing I want to show you is if you don't like these drives, which I, you know, they're, they're hanging off the uh, SATA cables and the power cable from the C, uh, power supply, you can get these guys too. This is the same thing. This is a Kingston 120 gigabyte. Boom. And it plugs right into your, ah, I can't get my, right there, right into this port. And then you screw it down. And uh, you can uh, basically install Windows on this as well. And this is now your boot drive right here. Ooh, right there it is. I like these things. Again, one less thing to be uh, hanging off the motherboard. They're low profile. Boom, and they work great. So from now on, I'm using these guys right here. Let me get a close up for you. Can you see that? <clears throat> yeah and that is pretty much it boom then you go you pick your uh, mining pool of, of choice what do you want to get paid out in uh, most of CPU mining you're doing a uh, random X or you're doing Monero is that the same thing God, I'm, so, I'm just so out of it lately uh, you're, put, you're basically with CPU mining you're limited if you have GPUs you got more flexibility with the algorithms uh, and uh, with CPU, you got a few nice hashes, X Monero, and uh, what do they actually call it? Random X Monero is theirs. Uh, and then on Unminable, it's Random X. And I think they switched over to something else because it was paying out better. I, I forgot. I did a video last night on it. And uh, you can go to Zerg Pool and you can mine different algorithms. I'll tell you which ones will mine uh, CPU only, GPU and CPU, or ASIC. Uh, zergpool.com is pretty flexible. Uh, what else is there? Yeah, that's pretty much the ones I've been using. Zergpool, NiceHash, HiveOS. Uh, I'll let you do any level of control like HiveOS and NiceHash OS. Let you come up in their OS, but you manage everything from their dashboard. Uh, NiceHash Miner, which I have. You just put it down on your Windows box, and then you open it there, let it start up from there. And it's a little kind of a hybrid. You run the dashboard, but the miner is running... Uh, in your Windows operating system versus its own dedicated nice hash OS. Same with the Hive OS. Same, same but different, right? Different, different outfits. Anyway, that is it. Hope this helps. Want to do a little hands-on. Wee. This one's red. This one's green. Wee. Same mess. I just have those things hanging right now. I do. And then there's my little AMD five. That's getting about four kilohash a second on nice hash. And I do love those little memory sticks over these little drives. Those are awesome. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Hope this helps answer questions. I'm sure other people are doing it differently. I just want to keep things super simple. And this equipment was just sitting gathering dust for a year. I fired it back up with the latest increase in profitability on CPU mining. I'm up to 180 bucks after doing two and a half weeks on NiceHash. Eh, it's fun money, right? I'm going to hold it in Bitcoin. And I'm just going to let it ride, leave it on there for a while until it gets a certain amount, bring it down to my wall, and just keep stacking those Satoshis. That's where I'm at. I'm not doing GP money, sorry. Uh, that was just way too much work and cost and everything. All right, hope this helps. I will uh, make another video later. And hope, uh, hope you guys have some input on this. Any recommendations? If I add four sticks of memory, does that make it even better? That's my one question out to the public, to the community. If I have four channels of memory, DDR4, 
will that make my hash rate go up? I don't want to spend any more money on equipment, but if, there's, if they say it's going to double my hash rate, I might just buy a few more sticks of memory. Not sure, because you got to look at the ROI, your return on investment. If I drop out 200 bucks on memory, I just blew all the money I just made. You know, it's, it's that whole game of, is it a hobby? Or are you trying to make a couple bucks to pay your bills? And you're not going to pay your bills with this stuff. You're just going to have fun. That's the truth from my point of view. All right, take care. I'm out of here.